Yo, what's up everybody? In today's video, I wanna show you all the best settings for Apex Legends Season 6 Boosted. First up, let's go into the gameplay settings. I didn't change that much. Uh, first up, interact prompt style. I'd suggest compact if you're a more experienced player. For default, you know, if you don't really know the game yet. The rest, not really important. For damage numbers, I really suggest stacking. You can do both as well, but Stacking is the best. Just don't ask. Stacking is the best. The rest, I didn't really change much. Hop up. Pop up is a new one for me. Not exactly sure what it means, but I guess it's on. <laughs> Next up, we have taking damage closest death box menu. I definitely suggest if you put that on off. Because when you're in a death box, looting like a, an, a purple armor, if you want to quickly armor swap, but you keep getting shot at. Then you go out of it if you have it on on. I suggest put it on off. You can manually just leave it without getting kicked out of the box without really taking what you need. So yeah, put it on off. Uh, the rest doesn't really matter. Next, we have controller settings. I suggest play on evolved. It's, you jump with L1. It's definitely something to get used to. But look here, I can show you all. This is my controller. This is my controller right here. I hold my controller. <laughs> I hold it like this. It's it's pretty weird, I guess, but this is how I jump. This is how I zoom in, and this is how I shoot. Of course, I have the back paddles. Uh, I, this one I use for the abilities. Like if I'm Pathfinder, I, I grapple with this one. This one I use for reload. So I barely really use my buttons on the side. It doesn't really matter. Even though I have a scuff, I can jump with this one. I still prefer jumping with L1, so it's definitely something to get used to, but it will really pay off in the end, in my opinion. And of course, uh, crouch with R3. I've been doing that for nearly uh, eight years now, so I mean, always crouch and R3 in every game you can. Crouching is way more important than freaking meleeing, you know? So crouch with R3. Yeah, I mean, the rest is pretty good. Bumper jumper is also pretty good. Uh, if you somehow prefer to crouch with circle, I don't know why, but Bumper jumper is pretty good too. Next up we have crouch button. That's an important one. Personally, I like toggle, but a lot of good players like hold. So you can really spam crouch. But uh, for me, it's personally toggle. You can go into the firing range and check it out if you want what you prefer. But you know, for me, it's toggle. But you can definitely try out hold if that works better for you. Aim button, not messing around with that. The dead zones. It's also important, look here for me, on the trigger st on, on the uh, R2, I have trigger stops, as you see right here. I'm not sure if you can see it right. It's kind of blurry, but I have trigger stops, so if I put it this, it already fires. But for some people, you have to put it all the way down. If you have a slow trigger, or if it's an old controller, you could put your trigger stops, or your dead zones, on none. So it, it will fire faster. If you have it on max, you're crazy. <laughs> it will take ages before you shoot. So either have it on default or uh, or none. For me, it's it's default. Menu cursor speed, of course, a little bit higher than normal. So you can quickly go to the through the death boxes and grab what you need, like a purple armor, armor swap, or, or attachments or anything. Sensitivity, this is an important one. Very important. Of course, go with what you prefer, but personally, from my experience, I've been playing FPS shooters for 12 years now, and 6.4 is the best. You know, first up, the 6, look sensitivity, so you can look around quickly. But if you want to zoom in, you want to be more accurate, of course. So that's why I put it a little down at 4 for the ADS for sensitivity. So I really prefer 6.4. You can go 5.4 as well, that's what I used to rock. Even 4.4 four is pretty good, but I'd really try out 6.4 if I were you. I, I'm not messing around with the pair optic. You could do that, but uh, you know I didn't. So <laughs> I'm just all using it on default. It works for me, you know. Response curve, also classic, but you can change it around. Let's say I've heard from, uh, if you come from different games like Overwatch, from Overwatch to Apex Legends, I try out Steady if I were you. I mean, I'm, I don't know much about these personally. You can all test them out in the firing range, do what you prefer. But if you come from like Call of Duty or Battlefield, I'd suggest classic uh, response curve. 
Dead zone, also very important. I'd suggest small. I used to have none all the time, but with small, you don't have much stick drift. If you have it on none, you will have stick drift with your controller. So if you just, if you're just looking still, it, it could go, <laughs> looks very stupid, but you could move around even if you're not moving, if you have it on none, that makes any sense. So yeah, definitely use small, don't use large, that will screw you over. Please just use small. Movement, dead zone, also small. So you can have a quicker, you know, your button works quicker in the field. Man, that sounds so stupid. God damn, like, <laughs> in the field, man, whoa. In the freaking, in the Apex Legends map. Just use small, please, use small. Vibration off, I'd suggest, you know, I, man, everybody sh should. Vibration, I suggest off. Everybody should just turn it off. I mean, even if you like it now, I used to run vibration all the time back in the day. But once I took it off, I was way more accurate. No more shaky hands because of the, you know, when I shoot, it's like, oh shit, I'm missing half my shots because of the vibration and nobody wants that. Custom loop controls also didn't mess around with that. You could do that in a very in-depth way. But, uh, you know, I like what I have now with the default. All right, video, next up is video, uh, fuel of view. I suggest anywhere from 92 to 110. Uh, you know, you'll see in game, here, right here, you'll see, this is 70, and then you have 90, and then you have 110. With 110, you have so much more, just, you have so much more to see from left to right, you know, I mean, with 70, sometimes, if, you, if an enemy comes from the left, with 70 FOV, you can't see them, but with 110, you can. So I really, really suggest you would use 110. Unfortunately, other games don't have this field of view option, usually only on PC, but not on console. Like Call of Duty doesn't have field of view on console, unfortunately, which really sucks because this is such a great feature that every game should have. Next up, we have Sprint View Shake. I definitely suggest minimal. Let's say you're running through a Gibraltar airstrike, your your screen is all going crazy and shaking, just too much to even see. That's why you will run minimal, so uh, you don't have as much shakiness in your screen. Man, that sounds weird. Audio, it really depends on what you want. Personally, I put masters on max sound effects. I put a little bit down if you want to, um, you know, hear footsteps louder. Sound effects maybe on like. 85 or something the dialogue a lot lower i i suggest 50 music of course i mean if you really want to be sweaty as shit i'd just turn it off if i were you disable voice chat uh yeah just keep that shit disabled that's all good all right now we will go into the best legends to play in season six I've played every legend numerous times, dropped 20 bomb, dropped a dozen 20 bombs with every legend, so I kind of know what I'm talking about. You know, let's say you want to pop stomp, this is not about ranked, because I don't really play ranked a lot, it's really toxic in my opinion, but if you just want to have fun and slay some enemies and pups, Bloodhound, really good legend now, so many people are running him, I definitely suggest trying him out. Uh, you know, personally, actually, every legend is pretty balanced right now, it's none of them really suck anymore which is great you know some of them could use small buffs like bangler could use a little buff um even watson could use a buff maybe octane too but i like them all for now it really is your play style of course if you're more of a rush kind of person and just want to attack of course run wraith pathfinder and, and lifeline or if you want to be more beefy and tank more bullets but also be a team player use gibraltar if you want to camp hmm, use caustic or rampart or watson i don't suggest that though because you know, everybody hates campers <laughs> but yeah i actually man there's there doesn't even have to be a list which legend is the best or not because they're all pretty damn good literally none of them suck i mean i wouldn't run rampart or watson or loba necessarily because i don't really like them you know i feel like they are worse than the other legends but they don't suck by any means you know they're still pretty good if you know how to use them next up we have weapons this 
is a big, big change in season six. Flatline, pretty good. I'd suggest picking it up. You could definitely use it in endgame. It really shreds and yeah, it's a good weapon. G7 Scout, pretty average. Um, you always need a scope for this weapon. So if you're gonna use it, I'd suggest using a scope like the uh, one times or two times or even a ranger scope. The ranger three times, Hitchcock is really good too. Hemlock, really got buffed, really good now. I suggest using it now and yeah, just try it out. It's shreds, man. R301, <laughs> it's the only good light weapon in my opinion in the game right now, unless, listen up, unless you're running something strong as a main weapon and then like an RE45 as a secondary weapon. Cause that gun actually really shreds if you have it as a secondary weapon. You know, if you wanna quickly pull it out and fry somebody, the uh, R, fuck, what was it called again? The RE45 will really do the job. Next up, we got the Havoc. Oi, man, it's still a crazy good weapon in my opinion. Energy weapons are the meta right now. If you're not using energy weapons, you really should. It's, uh, it's it's the best kind of weapons in the game right now, especially the new Volt right here. One of the strongest guns in the game, in my opinion. Dead accurate, high damage. You need a, uh, what's it called? You need an extended mag for it though to really be good, but yeah, it's it's crazy, man. Fortunately, RIP R99, I've, I've used it like three or four times since the update, man. It, it never shows anymore, unfortunately. RIP, RIP this beauty. Prowler, man, it's probably top three best guns in the game right now. Really good. Try using it if you haven't already. Uh, personally, not a big fan of it when it doesn't have any attachments, but when it's full attachment, bro, god damn, this thing is beautiful. It will fry so many people just easily. Alternator, just really a starting weapon. I suggest dropping it like mid game. Don't use it. <laughs> it's just a starting weapon, to be honest. EVA 8, this weapon is interesting. It's only really good with the purple shotgun bolt. If you don't have a purple shotgun bolt, you're kind of screwed. Don't use this weapon, only use it when you have a purple shotgun bolt. Mastiff, still really good, but it's a weird gun. Sometimes you hit like uh, nine damage, but sometimes you hit 90 damage. It really, like you have to zoom in with this weapon. This is a weapon that must zoom in to kill. Mozambique. Actually, it's not bad. It still has the free, um, <laughs> the free holes in the front, even though it has four bullets right now. But if you get a hammer points for this and you're kind of accurate with it, I suggest running a scope on it, any scope really. But it's pretty good if you have the attachments for it, like down. Peacekeeper, also care package weapon, really good. Always use it. I mean, this thing is crazy. Snipers, this is interesting. I mean, if you're not a good shot, obviously don't use any snipers. Besides the charge rifle, you don't really need a good shot for that. But personally, Sentinel, it's average, really. Only use it if you have a dead accurate shot because it doesn't do much damage. It only does about 70 damage a shot. And uh, yeah, it's, it's not really good in my opinion. Triple take, actually a lot better this season. I see people fry with it left and right. I mean, you can use it as a shotgun, to be honest. That's how crazy it is right now. So yeah, try using it. Kraber, of course, care package weapons, just, I always play around with it, trying to kill the last few squads, it's pretty fun. Longbow. Ooh, this is a, an interesting weapon. It used to be a god tier weapon back in the day, but for now, it's it's alright. I mean, uh, I like to play around with it, just, you know, <clears throat> let's say you want to go at a squad from a distance. Of course, use the longbow to crack them, like crack their shields before you push in, then just kill them but yeah that's that's what i would use it for uh unless you're crazy cracked with it i mean you can use it anywhere close range doesn't really matter but yeah, this thing is fun to play with that's for sure all right pistols r45 we talked about that b2020 uh, it's bad man it's bad i don't like it at all even with the hammer points i mean with the hammer points it's all right but i'd still like use a prowler or a volt over a p20 with hammer points you know wingman really strong but really hard to shoot with in my opinion i mean i feel like everybody has trouble hitting their shots with the wingman even the best players do uh i've heard a lot of people suggest that you should use the scope on it like a one times hitchcock really works well on the wingman 
it's really good now with the skull piercer back so yeah definitely try using this gun and you will fry people with it if you can hit your shots i feel like it's all the weapons we talked about for now right nope next up we have the live machine guns devotion oh it's disgusting it's really good if you can find the turbocharger for this thing it's game over for everybody else this thing fries i don't know why it's a ground weapon it should never be a ground weapon this thing is strong as shit next up we have the spitfire also really good especially if you're playing rampart this thing fries always pick it up as rampart i mean man this thing is crazy crazy good l star kind of shit in my opinion it's a starting weapon but you know at the start if l star is your first weapon nobody has armor yet this thing is really strong and will fry people in a second. <clears throat> I feel like that's everybody. Yeah. Just a little bonus tip for everyone that wants to drop high kill games. Personally, I drop the most high kill games on World's Edge because it's a bigger map and uh, it has more interesting points of interest like the new the new locations that have been added uh what's it called capital city that's still there kind of uh, a lot of people always go there and yeah just drop there if you want a lot of kills you know of course with skull town gone um the map is more spread out right now with uh, king's canyon but personally i still get a lot more kills on world's edge all right that's everything for this video i hope you enjoyed uh, this is my best settings guide i feel like Truly, this is the best settings for Apex Legends right now. If you disagree, let me know what else I can change to even improve it more down in the comments. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's it, guys. That's it. That's the best settings for Apex Legends Season 6 boosted. Peace out, everyone.